Hey guys! First of all, I want to say if I seem a little bit off in this video, there are multiple reasons, but the main one being Noah just took his first steps. <sighs> you guys, I don't, I, I can't, I just can't. But I'm still gonna make this story time happen because it's honestly a good one. I do have a glass of wine because it just feels like reminiscent of my old story times, which I'm sure you bitches thought I ran out of, but mm -mm -mm. as long as I am alive, bad things will happen. But anyway, let's get right into this story because there are a lot of things I need to talk about. Me and my husband went with a few of our friends to Las Vegas for Danny's birthday. Now, I'm going to do something really quick. I'm going to put up pictures of four of the people that are like the main elements of this story so that it makes more sense to you. Otherwise, you might get a little lost, so let's just, let's get this over with. The first person we have is Yesenia. I have known Yesenia since I was like 15 years old. She's also known as Yesi Ada here on YouTube. She has a channel. Then we have her husband, Caesar Milan, which is not actually his name, but it is when I'm around. His name is Caesar but his last name is sadly not Milan. Then we have Kathleen. You guys have seen her a billion times on my channel, Kathleen Lights on YouTube, and her husband, The Real Danny Lights, which his name is just Danny, but I call him The Real Danny Lights because that's his Instagram name, and I think it's fucking hilarious. And I said it was four people I was showing the picture of, but obviously my husband Nassim was in this story, so it's five. So we were all going to Vegas for Danny's birthday. They usually do that every year, and I have been with them to Vegas once before, and it was so much fun, so I told Nassim, we need to find a way to go to Vegas. Now, a lot of you guys know that me and my husband haven't been together for that long. We've been together a few years now, and most of the time that we've been together, I was either pregnant or a mom. So we had been on vacations before, but never like get on a flight, just us two, and go somewhere where we don't live. And we went back and forth for a long time before we finally just did it. We booked the flights. We somehow convinced Yesenia and Caesar to come with us, and we were super excited. Now, really quick, I used to have a fear of flying. Some of you may know that. I mean, if you're like a real OG on my channel. But I used to be scared shitless of flying. I am talking panic attacks in the air. Just driving on the street and seeing a plane, I would lose my shit. So it was, uh, it was bad. I did eventually kind of get over my fear of flying. However, I moved to Miami, I think it's like two years ago now, a little over two years, and I have not been on a plane since I moved back to Miami. So that's over two years of not going on a plane. And you know what happens in that time? You just build in your mind how scary flying is, like all over again, you just build it up. It's like you've never even been on a plane in your life. So I was scared, okay? I booked these flights and I could not get it out of my brain. I was like, I'm gonna die. This is, this is it? This is really, I know I thought I was gonna die that last time I went on a plane, but this time I'm actually gonna die. So I kept doing that and torturing myself basically until the day finally got here when we had to get on that plane. We got in the car, we're all driving there, and I decided to open up to the group about my fear of flying in hopes that, you know, they would just comfort me and be like, listen, it's gonna be fine, you need to chill out. I'm usually the person in the group that's freaking out about pretty much everything. I always think I'm gonna get in trouble for something. I've just always been that way. I've just been fearful of like authority and just everything. So my friends are usually the people who are like, Jesse, shut the fuck up. So I was telling them about how scared I was and that today was the day we were gonna die and they, um, they agreed. <laughs> Literally everyone in the car just started opening up about how they're scared shitless about flying and I was like, wait, wait, hold, hold on, what? We were talking about airplane disaster shows. I mean, you name it, we were just doing all the wrong things you're not supposed to do before a flight. We were doing all of them. So by the time we got to the airport, I had to shit myself. <laughs> I mean, I don't wanna get too TMI here, okay? But let's be real, it's me. I had to take a nervous shit. That's basically, that's basically the gist. <laughs> and I'm not gonna name names because I don't think the person in my group would appreciate that, but someone else had to take a nervous shit. We were just losing it. Like we were all scared shitless. Yesenia and Caesar also have a kid, okay? They have a daughter that's a little bit older than Noah. And so they left her behind too. So not only were we scared of like dying on the plane, we were scared of like leaving our children alone in life forever. And mind you, this was all like right after, I'm talking like a week. After the whole Southwest Airlines thing happened where like the engine exploded, I think, and it burst a window and the lady died that was sitting next to that window. So I immediately told everyone, there's no way I'm sitting at the window. And we all were like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing it. And finally Caesar was like, okay, fine. I'll fuck, I'll fucking sit by the window. Okay. We were all just losing our minds. And the guy behind us that was sitting there was like, I didn't want to sit by the window. I made that guy switch with me. I'm not dying today. <laughs> Eventually we landed in Vegas and it was oh, such a relief. We landed with a mindset of like we don't have a lot of time. 
to fuck shit up. Because we had our kids at home, so we had only planned to be there for three days, like two and a half days. So on the third day, we would actually leave. I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit concerned about Nassim. Now listen, me and Nassim have essentially the same tolerance. Like we can drink the same amount and get the same amount of drunk. But I've only seen him drunk like one or two times in our entire relationship, like really drunk. And Vegas is pretty much the place to get drunk. Like that's all you do in Vegas, other than like losing all of your money that you've ever made in your entire life. So I had a suspicion that things might go wrong and like possibly tragic. The night that we arrived to Vegas was the night that Kathleen had gotten the VIP at the Marquee. This was pretty much the main reason we came to Vegas. Like Danny's birthday celebration night, although they celebrated it for a while, like the main thing was the night at the Marquee. So we were ready. We were like, we were gonna get fucked up. So we start walking to like the entrance of the Marquee and all of a sudden I noticed that Kathleen's like really serious and I was like, What's wrong with you? And she basically told me that she just had a feeling that the guys were gonna get too fucked up and that it was not gonna be good. And I basically told her like, you don't know that, like don't worry, just have fun. So we go inside and I already knew that there was gonna be a dilemma, okay? Because they were gonna have vodka and they were gonna have Hennessy and neither of those go well with me. So I said, you know what? I've never had Hennessy, but it's a dark liquor and dark liquor nowadays usually sits better with me. So I'm gonna have some Hennessy. So I did and I had two drinks and I was feeling good. Now here's the problem. <laughs> so when you get VIP, they have a girl that serves you your drinks. She served all of our drinks and that's nice if she hadn't served them all like this much Hennessy and this much whatever the fuck else you got. She was making the drinks way too strong to the point that after I finished two Hennessy's, I just would hide my drink like this because I was like, this bitch is gonna fuck me up. She's gonna ruin my whole life. So I would cover my drink like this and I shit you not, this stuff only happens to me, I swear. It's because I'm so afraid of confrontation that in a way I just like subconsciously attracted into my life in the most awkward scenarios. But she came up to me and literally looked me dead in the eye and said, are you hiding your drink from me? You guys, I, I can't. <laughs> My insides just melted everything like I just wanted to die But did I tell her like oh no no of course not no that's not what I said I said hey no could you get me another one because I really wanted her to believe me that I was not hiding my drink But of course I was it was it was too much So I basically had those two drinks and then I got so nauseous because I just I couldn't handle it My stomach couldn't handle it So I just started drinking tonic water with lime and I did that because Danny is the drink police he goes around and he makes sure that you're drinking. He doesn't do that like on a regular basis, like if we're out, but if we're at the marquee and he pay for those bottles, everybody's drinking. <laughs> but I already know how to get around him by now. I just put a little tonic water, a little lime. He doesn't know the difference unless he watches this, but he's not gonna watch this. Will he watch this? I really hope he doesn't because that's literally like my saving secret. Uh, so maybe I shouldn't put this in. Okay, I'm scared. <laughs> Anyway, so I started doing that, but I noticed that Nassim, he was doing the exact opposite of that. He had had one or two vodka drinks, I think, in the beginning, like mixed with, uh, you know, whatever mixer. And then I noticed he switched to Hennessy, and I said, sir, um, that's a bad idea. But I didn't want to, like, stop him right away because he was only, like, three drinks in, and I said, you know what, everybody should just let loose tonight and have fun. But things went downhill pretty fast. So that night, DJ Vice was playing, and they gave us these little sticks that light up, and so you can like, I don't know, when the beat kicks, you know what I'm saying? Why do I just sound like a fucking grandma explaining that? Nassim pretty quickly got a super infatuation with this stick, and he was just hurling it around everywhere. He was jumping like it was the best day of his life. He was hitting people with it. He was falling all over the place. I mean, it was... It went bad. It went bad real quick. So I called him over and I said, babe, you need to stop. And he was like, no, I'm fine. I don't even feel drunk. I've pretty much nailed my husband's accent by now. Thank you very much. And I looked at him and I said, you're not fine. You need to start just drinking water because this is going to get bad. I must have told him that like five separate times. I pulled him away from everyone and I told him, please stop drinking. And he insisted that he felt nothing, but I'm not his babysitter. So eventually I just stopped. Like I stopped warning him and I was just like, you know what? Whatever happens, happens. So eventually we left and Nassim 
needed to essentially be carried by me back to the room like I had his arm over me and I kept begging him to stop putting all his weight on me because I had heels on that were killing me but he didn't care so I essentially like walked him back to the room he was cracking up like he was just laughing at nothing nobody was like talking to him he was just like crying laughing and we got back to the room and started ordering room service which is what you do at like four in the morning in Vegas obviously he said he wanted a cheese pizza so I said okay we order the food and like two seconds after we order the food I look at him and I say you're getting sick aren't you he was like ghostly white and just kind of like gazing off and I knew it I knew it was coming so I immediately told Yesenia to call and cancel his fucking cheese pizza about a minute later he went to the bathroom and he started throwing up I wish the story ended there but it doesn't. Now, I don't know exactly what it was. I think it's that Nassim was tired, but every time he would throw up, he would come out of the bathroom as if he was done throwing up. Like, that's it, I'm done, guys. He would wash his hands, and by the time he washed his hands, he would need to throw up again because he was, like, really sick and super drunk. One of those times that he came out of the bathroom and swore he was fine, he literally fell back onto Yesenia, who almost fell into the tub. It was... it was a disaster. And I wish that was the end of the story, but... It's not. So Caesar, as soon as we had gotten into the room, had knocked out. Like, he did not give a fuck about anything going on. He's like, peace out, everyone. Fuck you guys. But me and Yesenia stayed with Nassim, which, I mean, we couldn't do much. We just, like, stood there and basically watched him puke his whole life away. But eventually, Nassim, I guess, just felt really sick to his stomach. And in front of Yesenia, just turns around, pulls down his pants, sits on the toilet, and just starts, like, explosively shitting. Guys, this is like so ridiculous that I'm even telling you this, but he was like shitting like fucking like it was World War Three. Like he was just fucking shitting and Yesenia's like I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go over there. And that kept going for a long time and I felt horrible, okay, because it wasn't like funny at the time. I just wanted it to stop and I couldn't. Like there's nothing you can do really in that situation. We got our room service, Nassim's still throwing up, we're like eating our spaghetti and he's like fucking puking his life away and we're hearing it and we're just like eating our fucking pasta. Caesar Milan, literally like a zombie, <laughs> just like awakens from his slumber, looks over and says, is my cheeseburger here? <laughs> that motherfucker slept through World War III and woke up when he smelled his motherfucking cheeseburger. Tell me something. I can't. And the next morning, we found out from Kathleen that Danny was throwing up the whole night. She's like, oh my god, he was green. I have never seen him like this before. What the fuck happened? I knew this was gonna happen. I told you. And she was right. She had like a Miss Cleo moment before the club. Like, she knew she was gonna get fucked up. And I mean, if that happened like in Miami, I would be like, what the fuck, Nassim? But it happened in Vegas. And Vegas is just, it's like a weird part of the world where you're closed off and all of a sudden you're like 18 again and you're just like fucking reckless and before he threw up he literally had like the best night ever like he was so happy so the rest of the trip was really chill the next night we watched a show and then the day after that was the day we were gonna leave and I had made a joke in the beginning of the trip like right when we got there there's a tattoo shop like on the strip and so I jokingly said we should all get matching tattoos and for some reason on the last day we all just thought you know what fuck it let's just get these tattoos and like remember this trip forever. I don't know what the fuck we were thinking, honestly. But I didn't want to go to that shop on the strip because I felt like it would be too touristy. I read the reviews and a lot of people said that their tattoos sucked. So I started looking for like a local place that more local people would go to than tourists. And it had amazing reviews, five stars on Yelp. And I said, great, we're not going to get a fucking botched tattoo. So we went there and Caesar was not sure about his tattoo at first. He's like, fuck, I don't know. This is like permanent. But we all eventually decided that we would get our kid's name on our our body somewhere and so I got Noah with a little Leo sign. Nassim got Noah with a Leo sign here on his chest. Caesar got his daughter's name Aria with like wind in the background of it and Yesenia just got Aria written on the side of her wrist like me. So when we walked in there was a really unpleasant lady actually. She just like looked at us while we were explaining what we wanted and then she's like Okay, but that wasn't the girl that ended up tattooing us and I don't know how I'm gonna disguise this guy's identity I'm gonna call him cousin Larry because the way that he identifies himself is like a family member and then his name So I'm gonna say cousin Larry to like conceal his identity because honestly this guy is a beautiful soul Okay, he's just a sweet person He was talking to us and telling me basically like hey if you don't have any cousins you like like I'm your new cousin Like we're family now. I went first and so he started doing my tattoo then Nassim came after me 
me. And then Yesenia was after that. And Caesar was explaining to Cousin Larry like what he wanted, the wind and all that stuff. And Cousin Larry was kind of like not getting it, but like acted like he got it. But then another tattoo artist, we'll call him Derek, walked into the shop and Cousin Larry was like, oh, go sit with Derek. Like he's gonna do your wind tattoo and all that shit. And that's important later, I'll tell you why. But eventually we all got our tattoos. Everything was fine and dandy. I like gave Cousin Larry the biggest hug and I told him you are a beautiful soul. Like seriously, this was just so nice to meet you and you made our trip so awesome. So thank you. We leave and go to like the world's biggest Ferris wheel. Most of you have probably heard of it, but it's in Las Vegas. And as we're waiting in line for that, Yesenia like took off her gauze and basically like looked at it for a little bit and was like, oh, I mean, it's a little... Like it's a little crooked there. It basically looked like he had written outside the lines of the normal letters. I'm gonna show you a picture in a little bit to explain. But anyway, uh, we all agree that that was just a stencil because it was kind of like blue tinted and the color of the stencil that they trace on is blue. So I was like, nah, that's fine. He didn't fuck up. And we actually spoke extensively about how lucky we were that we didn't come to Vegas and get fucked up tattoos. And you guys, I just, I don't know how to, um, how to explain this because I love Cousin Larry. Like, Seriously, he's such a nice guy. He's been tattooing for 20 years and our tattoos look like shit. <laughs> mine didn't come out that bad, but I'm gonna put a close-up picture and you're gonna see that mine does not look that good. Nassim's tattoo looks like a henna tattoo that's been on for like two weeks. It's just completely faded. The letters are way too thin to be on a chest piece and it just, I mean, it's bad. And he's definitely gonna have to get it fixed, which is really frustrating because we did pay a lot of money. It's fucking Vegas, but yes and yes. Oh boy. <laughs> Poor Yesenia got the worst tattoo out of all of us. I don't know if he just got like too excited talking to her or what. I don't know what happened. But her tattoo is ridiculous. It looks like someone just got a tattoo gun and then tattooed it with their left hand. Like it just, it's completely bizarre. As you can see, the letter is like completely like what the line what what is that i don't even know how to explain it but caesar milan got so motherfucking lucky because in vegas he had the idea of like random wind which the guy drew on with a sharpie instead of like doing a formal drawing he just kind of like freehanded it and he killed it caesar's tattoo looks so fucking good like he just so happened to get the guy who just came into the shop had that guy come in like 15 minutes later 10 minutes later even caesar would have had to get cousin larry to do his tattoo and that shit would have come out Fucked. But yeah, three out of four of us got pretty botched tattoos and um... <sighs> I mean, what happens in Vegas ends up forever on your skin. But anyway, after that, we just, we went home and it was a great time. But anyway, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. I hope it was somewhat entertaining. I know it's kind of random, but you know, I finally had a story time, so I wanted to share it with you. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.